Hey everybody, this is the video that everyone has been asking for. This is the Berkseek video. I'm going to explain Berkseek and everything that I know about it personally. Um, I've been procrastinating on making this video for like two weeks now, but I told myself I would not go to sleep tonight until I have it all recorded, edited, ready to post. So let's go. In this video, I will be getting very in depth. Um, I will be talking about uh, what is Berkseek, how to use Berkseek if I help you get information, how to use Berkseek if you don't want my help to get information, and um, the difference between the free version of Berkseek, the premium version of Berkseek, and the extreme version of Berkseek, because um, I know a lot of people have questions about that. I will be answering basic questions that I get on a daily basis. If for any reason I sent you to this video or someone sent you a link to this video, it's probably because your an the answer to your question is probably in this video. So please, 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 please watch the entire video before asking questions because there's a lot of information that's gonna be in this video. Before I start, there are some basic rules, I guess you would say, about Brexit that pretty much everyone in the coupon community just kind of knows. It's kind of like common sense. Um, these are all things you should know before starting to use Brexit before going to the store. The first thing that I tell absolutely everyone is be nice to the employees. There's multiple reasons to be nice to the employees. One, um, why would you want to be a rude person to begin with? I can never understand that. Um, two, uh, you know, those people are just doing their job. So if you go in there and you're rude to them, like they're just trying to get paid. There's no need to be rude to them. And three, it's going to help you. This is the part that a lot of people do not comprehend is if you are nice to employees, the employees will be nice to you back and you will probably more likely get what you want. If you see all of these people on social media getting tons and tons and tons of stuff from Walmart, um, they're probably like, they probably got a good relationship with their Walmart employees. Um, I'm not saying that's always the case. I'm not saying that I'm best friends with people at Walmart, but like if I go into the store, I'm not going to be rude to the employees. I'm going to have conversations with them. I'm going to ask them questions in a nice manner. Um, and actually, most of the time, I try not to talk to employees at all. But if you do have to, be nice to them. The second thing that I want to tell everybody is don't mention Brexit to the employees. So it's not that it's bad for the employees to know about Brexit. It's not. Um, it's just that a lot of people are under the impression that you need Brexit in order to get these clearance deals, and that's not the case. Um, everything you see on Brickseek is just clearance, um, so you don't actually need Brickseek uh, to get the deals. Brickseek is just there to help you know what to look for, basically. So there's absolutely no need to tell employees about Brickseek. Number three, every store is different. If something is on sale for $5 at my store, uh, it may be on sale for $25 at your store. Do not get angry about that. Do not start demanding that store, that your store change the price because that's not how it works. Um, basically, if your store is $25 and mine is $5, uh, my store kind of just kind of shows you that, hey, your store will probably eventually get to that price. You just have to do the waiting game. Sit around, wait for it, um, kind of check it every single day to see if your store goes down. Uh, don't start getting angry because your store is a different price. That's totally, totally normal. Every single store is different. Number four, the prices on Brickseek are not always correct. So sometimes you may go on Brickseek and you may see a price and then you go to the store, you ring it up and it comes up a completely different price. Um, there's one of two reasons. One could be because you messed up. We'll talk about that later in the video. Um, but two, it can be because the price that Brickseek has on their website just isn't um, the correct price that Walmart put in the system. So basically how Brickseek works is Walmart has a bunch of information in their system um, and then they send it to Brickseek and then Brickseek puts it on there. So Brickseek only knows what Walmart gives them. So if Walmart messes up, which I'm sure if you've shopped at Walmart um, or you know the reputation of Walmart or whatever, um, it's not abnormal for Walmart to maybe mess up with something or it not to be consistently accurate. So um, sometimes Walmart will give Brickseek inaccurate information and then Brickseek gives it to you and then you're like, 
oh, but Burke Seeks had this. Um, it's just, it's just because Walmart gave them the wrong information. This is very rare. I've had it happen maybe twice. I had it happen with some tampons and a Keurig. Uh, but other than that, most of the time, uh, Burke Seek is pretty, pretty accurate. Um, but do not be surprised if you walk in and you see something that is like it rings up different. If that does happen, put it back, walk out. There's nothing you can do about it. No yelling at employees because remember, rule number one. And that leads us to number five. If you cannot find a deal, take the L. That's what I always tell people. Um, for those of you who don't know what the L means, it means take the loss. You didn't win, go home. Um, you can be sad if you want to. It's happened so many times to me. Uh, but I promise you in the future, you will eventually find a winner. You will eventually go in, find something really good. And all of those losses you may get will be made up for, I promise. So whenever you get the L, do, do not, do not get mad. Do not start yelling. Do not, so many people do. It's actually so surprising how many people do this. And it just gives all of us in the clearance and coupon and we just want to save money community a very very bad rep very 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 bad so if you can't find the deal just go home and the last thing which i've already told you um but i just want to make sure i hit it so much bigger uh brixie is just clearance deals that's all it is it's just clearance that's all you're just walking in trying to find clearance sometimes the clearance aren't marked yet because basically the manager is it's the manager or employee's jobs to go through and put stickers on everything. I'm You've all seen the yellow stickers at Walmart for clearance items. Um, but sometimes the, the system is what tells them to put those stickers in. So they scan the item, they see it's a, a cheaper price, so they put a sticker on it. Well, if they're running late or they're being lazy or whatever the case is and they don't get that sticker put on there, that means that that price is still lower uh, we just can't see it because the manager or the employees haven't helped us see that that uh, cheaper price yet. So um, something may say it's $100, but in reality, it's $50. We just don't know. Uh, so our job is just walk in and find those items. There's nothing, no coupons needed, no app needed. Uh, it's all just the luck of the game, basically. I like to call this a couponer's uh, scavenger hunt because that's really all it is. So that is all of the main stuff you need to know before walking in and using Brickseek. So now everything I'm going to show you, um, everything I can think of at the, the moment, um, is going to be screen recorded on my computer. I'm going to go step by step. I'm going to show you exactly how I do a deal um, starting with if I give you the information. So let's go. So here you can see I'm on Brickseek's website. This is their main site. This is their home page. Also, you can see that I am not logged in. This is just a free um, Brickseek site. So everything I am about to show you will be completely free no matter who you are. You can just go to the website and do it with no problems. So if I were to give you information, it will typically look like this here on the right. I will say check Brickseek. I'll give you the possible price uh, for this item. This is the most recent item that I've been able to find. Um, I found it for $27. The store is Walmart and it is a grass trimmer. Below you will see SKU and UPC. So a SKU and UPC number, these are special numbers associated with that item that will allow the employee to find out where it is, how much it costs, how many they have in store. Um, it's also what helps the website keep track of the information along with Brickseek keeping track of the information on this specific item. Uh, two items can look absolutely identical, but they have different UPC numbers or different SKU numbers. So that's why it's very, very important to have this UPC number because um, one item might ring up $10, the other item might ring up $20, and it might be because you don't have that correct UPC number. You have to make sure that the item you're looking for is a UPC number. For any of you wondering what a UPC number is, um, it's actually on a barcode. You can actually find this information um, just looking at an item. So let's just Google and show you guys how um, a UPC number 
on barcode. So this is what a UPC number looks like on an item. I'm sure a lot of you are familiar with this. This is what you scan at self-checkout. This number six one four one four one zero 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 three six. This is the UPC number. So whenever you are looking for, let's say you're looking for this grass trimmer, um, and you want to make sure it's the one that is twenty seven dollars, you want to make sure that this barcode has this number that I gave you right here, the zero eight four nine three one eight four seven three two three. It may look the exact same, but if it has a different UPC number then the chances of it being $27 is going to be very, very low because that's technically a different item. So that is why these numbers are here and they're very, very important. So the next thing that we are going to do with a SKU or UPC number is we are gonna go back to the BrickSeq website and up here at the top, you'll see different tabs. You'll see deals, inventory checkers, members area, blog, community. Um, to use these UPC numbers, we're going to go to Inventory Checkers. And like I said, the store here is Walmart. So we're going to go to Inventory Checkers and then Walmart. Now you have this page. Here you can see Search By. Oh, right here. Uh, if it lets me highlight it. There we go. Search By. And you see SKU. And then you see UPC. So you can choose which number you have. Some couponers or people who share information with you, they may only give you one or the other, which is why it's important to be able to change between the two. But for this one, I'm just gonna type in the SKU number for this grass trimmer, which is 852041078. I'm gonna type in my zip code. Um, obviously you would wanna put in your zip code, not mine. Um, and then, you can leave this how it is and click check inventory. It takes a little bit of time to load, so do be prepared for that. Okay, so now, look, there it is. There's the grass trimmer that I was talking about. So here we have the name of the trimmer. We have the MSRP. So this number right here, this MSRP, this is just how much it is worth. So this um, grass trimmer was originally $74. It does how much it's worth. Um, here you can see it has the SKU number and here you have the UPC number which matches the UPC number on my um, picture over here, same UPC number. So here we have $78 Walmart, that is the online price. The online and in-store prices can be different all the time. So I would not go off of this number. Um, Amazon has it for $74. This when I look at these, it just kind of gives me an idea of how much it's worth. I look at this a lot whenever I'm thinking, hey, you know, how much can I resell this item for? It gives me kind of an idea, but it's not important for what we're doing. So down here, we're going to scroll down and now we see something a little bit different. First, we have the store availability and price. So the store is obviously going to be, um, you know, the different stores around your area. Um, these are just like, um, this isn't where I live. This is like the next town over, but there's this one and this city and this city, um, in this city, you go, you go down and it's just all the different cities around your area. So then you have availability. So this tells you how many of this item is in the store. So if I go to Belton, Texas, Walmart, it's most likely going to have six or more of these in stock. And here's the price here for $27. So the thing about availability is that it's not always accurate just because people might steal the item, uh, people might hide the item. Uh, so in order to find it, you would have to do like a complete scavenger hunt. Um, maybe you went in the store, someone else got it like five minutes before you, so they just checked out. Um, so whenever you see, go to the store, it might not be accurate. You cannot go based off of this whenever you're going in the store. So if you go in, well, I mean, like you can go off of this. Like if I saw this, I would most like, likely go to the store to go find it. But like if you go in there and the employee says, no, we don't have that, you can't just tell them, well, BrickSeq says you can't do that. Like I said, remember my rules, don't mention BrickSeq to employees because it's not needed. So if the employee says that they don't have it um, after doing some 
like researching then or like looking around to find it then you just kind of take the L right uh, but for this item this is a pretty big item um, a grass trimmer so I would expect this to be in the store um, and then I would expect it to be $27 in Belton, but if I went to Waco, Texas, I would expect it to be $43. This price, like I said before, is usually pretty accurate. Something else that's important about the price is notice that these are black. Um, that's important because if I'm just scrolling by and seeing these, I know that this is not the lowest price in my area. If I scroll down, uh, $19 was the lowest price, but it looks like it is out of stock. So I would not get lucky trying to find it for $19, but I would get lucky looking for it for $27. So that is the most basic way to look up an item that I may give you to see if you have it in your store and to kind of determine if you want to go to Walmart and try to find it or not. Now let's talk about if you go to the store and you cannot find it. This is something that will vary um, a lot based on where you go, but there is this view barcode here. Now, I want to stress so much that this view barcode is only, only, only used um, to ask employees to check and see if they have it in stock. You do not use this barcode at checkout. You do not use this barcode um, for anything else. If you use the barcode, this one right here, which I'm about to show you, if you use this barcode to check out, that is illegal. You can get in legal trouble. I'm not kidding. It's not something that I'm like, oh, just don't do it. No, like don't do it. Do not do it. So now that I've said that, um, if we click on view barcode, you get a plain blank page with just the barcode on it. So if you have this page, you can actually show this page to an employee and ask them to use their handheld device to scan this barcode and it will bring up how many are in stock, where it's in stock at, and information for the employees to help you find the item. This is not always, um, this is not always the best to do. Uh, I've tried it a few times and a lot of the times whenever something's on clearance, it will just show them, hey, it's on clearance. This item is in, in the clearance aisle. But obviously, I always go through the clearance aisle before asking an employee. So it's not very helpful if it brings that up on the device. But sometimes it will show the employee where the item is at or if the item is in the back, uh, which is why it's always important to maybe ask the employee to scan this before deciding to leave the store and take the L. Um, but if you, the employee does scan this, says they can't help you, um, still take the L and go home. But if sometimes you can get employees to help you with this. I would 100% recommend if you're going to go up to an employee to ask them to scan this barcode, ask someone in the paint department or the fishing department. Those people kind of just stand there. They don't have much to do. They don't talk to a lot of people. They don't have um, like a lot of stuff they have to put up because a lot of people maybe don't shop in that section as much as the other sections. So they have a lot of free time and those people are probably more willing to help you find what you need rather than the other ones who are trying to um, restock toilet paper or put up all the food and stuff like that. Other people who are super busy. Um, so I would recommend that you talk to those people if you want to try to use this barcode to find an item in the store. Okay, so next up, let's say that someone posts a picture of a clearance item, but they don't give you the UPC number and they don't give you the SKU number. You can actually look up the SKU number of an item uh, without needing anything else. And you can do it on the free version of Brookseek. So, what we're going to do is first, you obviously need a picture. So over here, we're going to use this as an example, this Frigidaire um, dry erase board mini fridge. So what you would do is come over here to Brookseek, go to inventory checkers. You have to make sure you know which store it is. In this case, we know it's Walmart. So I'm going to click on Walmart. Now, normally you would type in the SKU number or the UPC number, but like I said, we don't have that. So, Brickseek actually has this right here that says, need help finding a SKU? Try our SKU finder. The SKU finder is 
really, really, really amazing. I use it all the time. Um, you would just type in what it is that you are looking for. You have to make sure you type everything correctly because they do not um, like autocorrect or whatever. So let's see, this is a Frigidaire dry eraser board. We'll just type that. So nothing popped up. So now I need to just rearrange my words, try to use less words. So I'm going to use Frigidaire dry. Okay, so many of them are coming up, but I know that I need the red one. If things are different colors, that does matter uh, because the different colors can be different prices. So I know I want this red one. It is the 1.6 dry erase with side bottle opener in here. We can see the, the bottle opener. So I'm going to click on that one and it's going to automatically put in the SKU for me. And if I automatically have my zip code in there, it will automatically search for me. So here we can see it's originally $95, but at my stores, it is $21, but it's out of stock. So I can't go get this deal, but at least I know that it was $21 in my area. And now I have all the information for it that I need in case maybe I want to share it with someone else. So this is the easiest way to find a deal um, if you don't have the UPC or the SKU number. I would suggest using this a lot. I use it weekly. I use it all the time. Okay, so let's say that you want to find your own deals, but you want to use the free version. Because remember, I'm still not logged in. This is all still free, everything that I'm showing you right now. So if you want to find your own deals, there's a couple things you can do, which I feel like are pretty obvious for the most part. Um, on the main page, you scroll down and you'll see different items that are on sale. These are just going to be basic items, depending on like what's around you, what's on the internet and stuff. Just some stuff um, that you can look at. Or you can go to deals up here, the first tab. There's trending deals, newest deals, trending online deals, trending in-store deals, and then different categories you can go off of. So these are just going to show some basic. Let's go to newest deals to see what's new. Um, it'll show you stuff from Amazon, Best Buy, Home Depot. Lowe's, Macy's, Office Depot, Target, and Walmart. These will be a mix of in-store deals and online deals. So this is just one way to look through, find some deals that maybe you might be interested in. Um, like here, here is a uh, air fryer for $34. That's pretty good. You can just go through that. Here you can see it says 469 premium deals hidden. So premium is the next step up. Premium is $10 a month, I believe. And um, basically what it does is it gives you more things to see. So here you're seeing quite a few deals, but you're not seeing all of the deals. So whenever you bump up to premium, you're just going to see more deals. And then whenever you bump up to extreme, you're going to see even more deals than the premium we're seeing. So this is just like a pretty easy way to look for deals yourself. That's the only thing that you can really do whenever you have the free version. Uh, once you have premium, not only are you going to be able to see more stuff, but there are more options for you here in the members area. So let me log in real quick and I will show you some stuff that you can do um, extra if you are a premium or extreme member. Okay, so now I am logged in and automatically you can see something that is different. If you scroll down, here you can see these words, see extreme, premium, extreme, premium, premium. Um, these items are items that would not be shown to someone with a free account. So if you bump up to a premium, you can see, you would be able to see these three items plus the free account. And when you have an extreme membership, which is what I use, um, you're also gonna see a few extra items. So down here, like here, you can see all of these are extreme or premium. Down here, more extreme premium. You just get to see more items. So something else, um, I'm going to start out with premium. The number one thing that I absolutely love about BrickSeek is actually on the premium account. So if you go to the members area, I now have unlocked all of the, I have the extreme membership, but if you have the premium, you have these three unlocked. Markdowns by store, today's markdowns, popular searches. So popular searches is just what people are looking up the most. 
Um, if you are familiar with both me and the freebie guy, usually if we post a brick seek deal, a lot of those items will be in the popular searches. So let me just show you those real quick. Um, you can just decide which store you want to shop at. Most of the time it's Walmart, so we'll click on that. So these are items that people are looking up the most. Usually they are looking it up the most because um, it's a really good deal. Uh, for example, this microwave, I have not seen this yet. Uh, it's on sale for $29 in some places. That's pretty good. Um, so this is a really good way to like, just kind of before you go searching for a whole bunch of stuff, go in here, see what other people are searching for who may have already done their research a little bit more. Um, like here, this is the one I posted. A lot of people have been looking that up. So it's on the popular searches page. And you can just go through here. This is a pretty easy way to find some good deals and see if it's in stock. If you only want to see things that are in your stores, because whenever you sign up, you will give Brixie click your zip code and they'll base everything off that. You can go over here to the left. It says availability seen in my stores. Click on that and then go down to the bottom here where it says show 129. I'm going to click on that. So now everything I see has been seen in stores around me. That does not mean that um, they are in stock. Like for example, this uh, push mower is $59. Um, oh, it's pretty close. $59 is pretty close. That's pretty awesome. I might wait for that one to drop. Um, and then you can just kind of scroll down. Here we've got 50 cent outlet. You can just click on these view more and it'll just show you all the different areas where you can find it. Like if there's a Nintendo. Oh, well it says limited stock. So if it says limited stock, chances are it's not going to be there. I haven't talked about that yet. So let's talk about that. Um, if it says six or more in stock, there's a great chance that it's in the store. If it says there's four to five, chances are there's probably three to four. I always take one off um, just because, you know, people steal, people do crazy things. Um, people forget to scan something in self-checkout. It could really be multiple different reasons. Um, so when it says limited stock, usually that is either zero or the display. If it says limited stock, there's a very, very, very small chance that I'm going to go to the store and look for that item because it's probably not there. So just be careful whenever you see that on your computer when you're looking for something. So this is just what you're going to see. You're going to see all the different ones in your area for popular searches. Uh, but this is not my favorite option for premium. My favorite option is markdowns by store. So this does not mean just one Walmart or all the Walmarts. This means like a specific Walmart. So when I go over here, it's going to give me all the Walmarts in my area. So if I want to go to, um, let's say I want to go to Colleen, Texas, I would click view markdowns. And now these markdowns are the ones in that store, not all the stores, just that one store. I can look through and see what it is that there's on sale. So maybe you're at Walmart and you're like, hi, I wonder if there's anything on sale here today. You can just go look for the store that you're in and they'll give you a list of things to look out for. And I absolutely love this feature because it lets me know, you know, it lets me know in the store that I'm going to. It just makes things so much easier. Um, and then there's today's markdown. So this is kind of like all of the Walmarts put together. So all of the Walmarts, the deals that should be dropping in most of them, uh, this is what you're going to see does not necessarily mean that these are marked down in your store, but they might be things that you might want to look out for later. So these are all just markdowns just from today. So this is something maybe you would look at every morning. Get up, um, look at this, see if there's anything different uh, from what you might have seen yesterday, if there was anything good at least, and then go look for it if you want to. So this is also a really good tool. I personally love the premium member tools. Um, I personally would recommend everyone to get a premium membership um, if you really want to find good deals. Um, 
And then the extreme membership, which we'll talk about next, this is for people who maybe if you're a reseller, perfect for you. If you're someone who's willing to go from Walmart to Walmart to Walmart, then I would recommend this for you. If you live in a city where you have tons of Walmarts right next to each other, uh, I would recommend Extreme to you. But other than that, um, I feel like premium is pretty good for everybody else. If you're like a mom who just goes to the store like once, uh, once every couple weeks, once a week, um, and you're not really going there all the time, uh, I would stick with premium. But 100% recommend premium to everybody. So let me go ahead and show you the extreme membership. So the difference between premium and extreme, when you have extreme, you still have all premium member options. For example, I have extreme, so I have access to all of this. Um, the only difference is that you're gonna get a local markdown feed, an online markdown feed. I don't really use the online markdown feed a lot, but I do use the local. So basically what it does is like here where it says markdowns by store, the local markdown feed takes all of these stores together and shows you everything. So here we have the local markdown feed. So these are all things that I can find in my area and it will tell you how many stores you can find these things at. So if I really wanted, um, let's see, what do I really want? If I really want this frozen five piece backpack set, um, it looks like it's at one store for $5 in temple but it's limited stock so chances are i'm not going to be able to find that so then i would just scroll down and be like oh well i want this backpack oh it's in stock at temple for three dollars so now i know that I, that's the one i need to go to it makes it very easy for those who like get up and are ready to go to any store to get a deal because this just shows all the different stores put together in your area not around the united states just in your area which is also really nice. Plus, if you have the Extreme membership, you're going to see, let me go over to trending and store deals. You're also gonna see all of the Extreme items. So here's one Extreme item. Um, here's one Extreme item. Here's another Extreme item. So these are all things that I get to see that other people may not see. Here's another one. Um, and I've talked to someone who actually coded Brickseek and extreme items are usually determined by how good the price is. It's not always necessarily like that, but um, that's typically how it goes. If it's like um, a really nice TV, there might be a chance that it's going to be an extreme item, but not always. It's just, but this, this is just what it looks like. So I feel like that's pretty basic. It's pretty um, easy to understand, I think. So um, some other things that I want to talk about that I feel like would help some people. So this is something that I feel like would help people whenever it comes to like people who go extreme. So let's just say I go to an item. I'm just going to click on a random item. Um, let's say I really want the Superman thing. Takes a little bit to load. Any day now. Maybe it might load. It's taking forever. I mean, sometimes Brexit does like load pretty slow, but. Okay, so I'm at this item. Uh, you can also get to this page if you just look up the UBC number or whatever. Uh, but something that I have is pricing records. So something you can do with this is you can click on that and it will actually show you the time that it was updated. So let's say um, I can go up here and I can sort by distance. So that would be like, it'll show me the areas around me. So here, Temple, Texas, this is the closest one to me. There's six available for $15. The last time the price changed 
was on September 13th at 9 a.m. So that was this morning. So if I want to wait for this to go down more, maybe I don't want to buy it until it's five dollars. Uh, I'm gonna have to wait a while because usually markdowns are done like every week, every two weeks, something like that. Um, it's usually pretty random, but uh, if I'm wanting it to go down, I might have to wait like two weeks before it goes down to five dollars. Maybe even three or four weeks before it goes down to five dollars. But this kind of gives me an estimate of how long I need to wait uh, for that deal to go down more. Something else that I absolutely love whenever it comes to having a um, membership is if you go over here to this little man here, it says, hi, Kayla. It has account, dashboard, my stores, local inventory alerts, online deal alerts, shopping list, hidden list. So something I use a lot is my shopping list. What it does is it makes a list of everything that I'm looking for in each store. So actually, let me go back to an item. Let me go back to markdowns by store so I can give you an example. So let's say that, um, like I said, there's lots of stores around me. So if I go to this first one and I do want that Superman, and I'm like, man, whenever this goes down in price, I, I really, really want it. Um, I usually put it in my shopping cart to keep an eye on it. And all you have to do is click on shopping list, but you want to put it next to the store you want to go to. So it looks like it says it's out of stock in Temple. Uh, so if you go, if I were to go to Copper's Cove, I think is how you say it, and buy one, uh, put that on my shopping list. So then when I go back up here, go to shopping list, I can look for the store that I'm at. So see this says Temple, but I'm looking for Copper's Cove. And it goes by distance. Copper's Cove is kind of far away from me. So it's probably, it's all the way at the bottom. These are all different stores that I have set. Okay, here, here we have Copper's Cove. So if I go to that store, I know that this is the item I'm looking for at the store. It allows you to add different things to different um, stores because each store, remember, is different. So you want a different shopping list for different stores because you want to be able to find the cheapest thing at that store. Sometimes they are the same item, sometimes they're not. For example, here, um, you can see this wireless mouse and then you see it again at this right up here. That's because these are all different stores but they have the same clearance item and I want to see if I could find them at each one of those stores which is why I have them on my shopping list. So this is something I absolutely love. It kind of keeps me from having to remember what I was looking up um, or what I needed to find, or it gave me, it gives me like a easy access to barcodes to ask employees about. It gives me easy access to look up UPC numbers to make sure I'm looking at the right thing in the store. I really, really, really love the shopping list. And whenever you have extreme, you're able to add 120 items. I believe if you have premium, you're able to add um, 60 items. It's like half of it. So uh, that's just something to think of whenever you are getting a membership. The other thing that's great about having a membership is alerts. So if there's something that I'm waiting to go down on price, uh, for example, here's that lawnmower that I was looking at earlier. Um, like I said, I'm waiting for this one to go down. I'm waiting for all of this to go down. Um, so in order to see it as soon as possible, I set alerts for them. So basically how to do that is whenever you're on the page for that item, let me just go back to this one. So here's the item. You can click on local alerts and it will put on alerts for every store in your area. You can't pick and choose which stores you get alerts from. It's going to automatically give you alerts for every single item or every single store that that item is in. If it drops in price, you can also have it set to where it notifies you if it drops in quantity. So if someone buys them, then you know there's no point in keep keeping an eye out on it if it's out of stock in that store. So that's something else you can do with local alerts. Uh, local alerts are sent to your email. So you will get emails um, telling you what is what has changed. There's something else that I forgot to mention. Um, if you are an Extreme member, you have access to their app. Yes, Brookseek does have an app, uh, but it's not like all the way finished yet. They're still trying to like add certain things. Like right now it doesn't have 
alerts for like when price changes around your area happen um, and they want to do that so before um, they release it to everybody which may be like further on in the future right now it's just for extreme members so um, you have to like ask for permission to have it because they have to like send you a link um, and all the stuff like to, to access it because it's not accessible in the app store. So uh, in order to do that, there's a guy named John. He works for Brexit. Uh I'll put his information in the bio of this video uh, if you want to talk to him about getting the app. Um, I guess I should ask him first before posting this. Uh, if I posted this part in the video, then I have full permission to, like, have everybody go over to him and talk to him about it. But it's only for extreme members. Um, they won't let premium or free members get the app. So, um, so if if you don't pay for extreme, then no, BrickSeek is not an app. It is just a website. But for those of you who are extreme... Uh, you can get it as an app and it's just it's not a lot different than the website but it's nice to just have an easier access to it on your phone so that's all the information you need based off of like my screen recording now i'm going to tell you something that is very confusing um i if you need to re-watch this part a few times to understand it it's fine um but this is something that you might want to know if you're trying to go hard with it if you're using deal alerts a lot, stuff like that. So deal alerts are checked every 12 hours for extreme members and every 24 hours for premium members. But it is checked 12 to 24 hours after the time that you set that alert. So like I showed you, you can do the local alerts. So right now it is 8.45 where I live. So if I go on BrickSeek and I find something that I'm like, oh, I want to see if that drops in price later, I'll click on local alerts. Uh, it will say, hey, she set this at 8.45 p.m. So since I am an extreme member, 12 hours from now, so 8 a.m., the computer is going to do its little magic. And then if anything has changed, it's going to send me an email. If anything has not changed, it will not send me an email. And then um, tomorrow night at 8.45 p.m., it'll do its little magic and it'll do it again. And it'll continue to do that every 12 hours um, until something happens. But let's say, this is, this is going to get a little confusing. I have to think about it. Let's say my brother um, wants to find the same exact item. And let's say he's looking at it at... 9 45 p.m. so he sees it an hour later than I do so <laughs> he sets his alarm at 9 45 p.m. so that means he's going to if he's an extreme member he's going to the computer's going to do its magic at 9 45 a.m. 9 45 p.m. the next day normally your first thought is that oh he set the alarm later so he's going to see it later but that is not always the case sometimes it is uh sometimes it's not because that item can drop in price at any time throughout the day so if i set my alarm at 8 45 p.m today and my brother sets an al his alarm at 9 45 p.m today and tomorrow it goes on sale at 9 p at at 9 a.m., okay? It's 9 a.m. It drops in price. So my alerts are set to to do its magic at 8.45. So 8.45 a.m. comes around and it does its magic and it goes, oh, no, nothing's changed. And then I'm like, oh, okay. And then my brother's is set to to notify do its magic at 9.45. So remember, that item dropped at 9. So at 8.45, when mine checked it, nothing was different. But at 9.45, it's like, oh, hey, 45 minutes ago, this item changed in price. So my brother would get a notification saying, hey, this deal um, has dropped in price. Meanwhile, I would have to wait 
until 8.45 p.m. to get that email. So that's like a 11 hour difference. So local alerts are great, um, but it's not necessary. You're not necessarily going to be the very, very, very first pe person to see it. Um, so usually, I don't know, it just all depends on when people do the alerts. Most of the time, I feel like it doesn't really matter. Um, I feel like it would have to be like a huge coincidence for two people to be so close and miss it by like an hour like that. Um, but for those of you who actually kept up with what I just said, uh, you can just kind of get an idea of something. If it's something like really, really big, like when Black Friday comes around, maybe you really need something um, and a ton of people are doing that. It's just something to think of, but just for like everyday shopping and stuff like that, um, I haven't really noticed it being a big problem. I usually can still go in there, find things. So just letting you know. Now I went in the video with some tips just based off some things that I have personally done in the past because like I said, when I started out, I sucked at it and now I'm getting better. A lot of things on BrickSeek, you need to check that pricing record. I just recently learned about that pricing record um, option on the website. That's important because sometimes, uh, for example, just about a month ago, uh, the, there was this deal for a $50 iPad and it went crazy on social media. Someone who was very new to BrickSeek saw that on BrickSeek posted it to social media without finding it. They just saw it on BrickSeek, so they posted it. Um, and then everyone was like, oh my gosh, oh, I have to go find this iPad for $50. So everybody the next day was at Walmart and they were like stampeding and being rude to employees. Um, but everybody that was like pretty well known with BrickSeek knew that that deal was old. It was like months old meaning like we wouldn't have been able to find it. Meanwhile, all of these people were in the store thinking they were gonna be able to find it when they couldn't. Um, so that's one thing that is bad whenever you're new to BrickSeek is that you don't recognize the old deals compared to the new deals, which is why having that premium account where you can see today's markdowns, that helps a lot with that problem. Whenever you, you are looking specifically at such stuff that is being marked down today in store. Um, so you don't have that hectic, hecticness that went on with the iPad. That was crazy, it was not good. <laughs> Another thing that you have to think about is you have to think like a couponer. You have to think about people who really, really, really want those deals and will do anything to get those deals, okay? Because whenever I was first starting out, I would go to the store, I would look on the shelf, they wouldn't be there. I'd be like, how are these people finding these deals? Um, and then I'd walk out, like I'd be upset. But there are people, and, and I know this for a fact because I have a coupon friend that does this, okay? Um, I have a friend who they do this for a living, they resell for a living, and they know that something is gonna mark down in price. So they hide it in the store. They're like, oh, I want this when it gets to $5. So whenever it's $20, they take that, item, especially if it's small, they take that item, they put it halfway across the store so no one will find it. And then whenever they finally go on BrickSeek and see that it drops in price, they go to their hiding spot, they get it, they go check out and because they know that the item is now clearance to $5. So when you think like that, um, you kind of like look around the store more. You don't just look at where it's supposed to be because that's too obvious. It's too obvious. You gotta kind of do, if it's something really, really good, you gotta look around the store. Something else that I never thought of whenever I first started BrickSeek is that uh, sometimes they're up high. They're up on the shelf. So there was one deal that I found. They were dollar shower curtains. And if I looked at like just the shower curtains displayed, that you would normally buy. Um, I didn't find it, it wasn't there, um, but I looked up and I saw boxes. And usually you, when you're at Walmart, you'll see a bunch of boxes on the top shelf. Um, and those are just for like whenever the ones at the bottom get out of stock, they put them, they restock, whatever. But on the box, there's two things. There's usually a description that gives you sort of an idea of what that item is. And then there's also a sticker 
um, because it makes it easy for the employees to take their handheld, scan it, and make sure it's the right item before they have to like go through the trouble of getting the box down. Well, you can go on the Walmart app and there is a barcode scanner and you and it scans items and it brings it up on the Walmart app so that you can price check items uh, to make sure that they're correct. I haven't talked about that yet. I can't believe I haven't talked about that yet. Um, I'll, I'll go more in depth on that. But you can use that Walmart uh, scanner and if you're tall enough, which usually I'm tall, I'm tall enough, I'm like 5'3", so most of you should be able to do this. Take your phone and just go on your tiptoes and just put it up there and try to scan that barcode that's on that box and it will bring up what it is. It will bring up the clearance price on the Walmart app as long as you have it set to your location. And that is another way to find items. I found a whole box of dollar shower curtains one time doing that. Actually, I also found a whole box of dollar Minecraft blankets by doing that. So 100% recommend doing that because a lot of people go to the store, they look at where it's supposed to be and they go, oh no, it's not there. Um, but a smart shoppers, a smart clearance finders know to look up, look up, see if you can find them. And if you really, really, really want to be good, you have to get over getting anxious when talking to employees because employees are going to help you so much um, if they're nice. Uh, so usually they can help you know if there's something in the back, know if there's something um, in a different part of the store, know if it's even in stock. You have to talk to employees. When I first started, I never really talked to employees. Um, and now I'm getting better at like, oh, I can't find it. Let me ask an employee before I decide to leave the store. So those are my number one tips whenever it comes to finding stuff. So now let's talk about the Walmart app that I can't believe I forgot to talk about at the beginning. So the Walmart app is very important when you go in the store. So you've got BrickSeek. Um, and BrickSeek is made for at home, honestly. Like BrickSeek, I usually only use when I'm at home. I look up stuff. I make my shopping list. I only use BrickSeek in store to look at my shopping list and to see what it is that I need. Once I go to the store and I'm looking for something, if I think that I have found what it is that I want to buy, uh, to double check to make sure that the clearance price is correct, I do one of two things. I am lucky and I have a price scanner in the store, so I'll go up to the price scanner. The price scanner is always, 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 always 100% accurate. It is. The, the, I've never had a price scanner mess up on me. Price scanners are amazing if you're lucky enough to have one in the store. If you have the app, um, if on the front page of the app, I can't show it to you because I'm using my phone to record, but on the front page of the app, uh, you can go up to the upper right hand corner and it will show a little barcode. If you click on that, it gives you the option to scan a item's barcode and it will bring up a picture of the item uh, sometimes. Um, It'll show up how much it is in the store, but you have to make sure your store is uh, set correctly. If you have it set to a different store, you might see different prices, which is not good. So make sure you have your app set to the right location. Um, and you have to make sure you're looking at the in-store price versus the online price, because those two are also going to be different. Typically, um, on the in-store, it will... It looks a little bit different. Basically, if you are looking at the in-store, it'll have a price. And then when you click on it, it will take you to the online one. A lot of people get confused about that. They're like, how come it says $5, but when they click on it, it then shows $20. It's because when you click on it, it then takes you to the online place where you can buy it. You don't want to, you don't care about the online price. You care about the in-store price of that $5 or whatever it is. Um, and in the in-store price, it also gives you, typically, it gives you a map of the store that you're in, and it usually shows you where the item is if they have that information in the system. So that's one way to know that you're looking at the in-store. It also gives you the option to change which store you're in, um, and whenever you do that, you'll see the price changes. So those are things to look for in the app to make sure you're on the correct version of it.
there have been times when the Walmart app has sucked, showed me the wrong price. Um, there's been time, there was one time I was looking for a Keurig. I went up to the Keurig, I scanned it, I had it set to the right location. It brought up $21 and I was like, heck yeah, let's go up to the uh, cashier. But I also scanned it on the price scanner, which is how I know the price scanner is always accurate. I scanned it on the app. The app said, hey, this store has it for $21. I scanned the Keurig on this price scanner and it came up its regular like $80 price or whatever it was. And I was like, oh no. So I took it up to the counter. Um, I scanned it and it came up that $80 that the price scanner showed. I even tried getting the manager to overwrite it. The manager told me no. Um, I don't know why. They some Some stores will honor the app's price. Some places won't. Typically what I say is if it doesn't ring up the price that you want, it's not on clearance. Just take the L, take the L and leave. Like don't make a huge debate about it. Um, you can ask the manager nicely, say, hey, will you override this if they tell you no? There's nothing more you can do to that. Just take what you can and leave. If you can't get anything, just, just leave. That's all I gotta say about it. And yeah, this is basically everything that you need to know based off what I can think of uh, that you may need information of for using Brickseek. This should be able to make it very easy for you to go in, find your own deals. Like I said, I do recommend uh, doing at least the premium version because you're going to be able to find a lot more deals specifically in your area. You'll see a very big jump in um, deals that you'll find. But yeah, I think that's it. So hopefully this answers everyone's question. I hope it answers all of the questions that you may ever have for BrickSeek because uh, I get so many questions about BrickSeek. Um, if it is helpful, just let me know. If you have any questions, also let me know in the comments. Um, I try to answer all the comments that I can. Um, so, and also no question is a dumb question. So feel free to put it in the comments and I will try to answer it as soon as I can. Thank you guys for watching. I know it was a very, very long video, but I tried to get all the information in that I could because there were so many questions about Brick Seek. So thanks for watching.